and I'm back with the Devin Thomas Haas Cleaver. Um, I thought I'd do another video and actually talk a little bit and give some of my thoughts and impressions about this knife after having it for a few months and hopefully answer uh, some of the common questions that I get asked about it. However, first I think I could kind of back up and talk about what it is that I've got here. I understand that most of the people that are watching this video have probably done so on purpose intending to see information about a Devon Thomas Cleaver because they know what that is. Um, However, this is the internet and crazy things happen. We have no idea who might be watching the video. So, uh, talk about what this is. This is a Chinese style um, chef's knife. It's a general purpose uh, kitchen knife. It's a thin slicing uh, style blade made by a custom knife maker, Devin Thomas. Uh, the knife was sort of designed with feedback from the kitchen knife geek community, primarily on uh, knifeforums.com in the kitchen section, and was kind of orchestrated and coordinated by owner and operator of Chef's Knives to Go.com, Mark Richmond. Um, this is not a, a one off um, knife. Devin Thomas makes one of a kind, fully custom knives. This is kind of a semi custom, so Devin used help in doing some of the grunt work. Um, you know, general rough cut of the blade, um, but he still oversaw production and did the assembly and hand finishing himself on these. Uh, so they're a, a small batch knife rather than a totally unique one off custom. This is actually part of the first batch or first generation um, of the knives that were made and sold. The second generation had some changes. This neck here uh, is deleted. So that's what that's what we're talking about here. Um, I, I think a lot of the confusion when people hear Chinese cleaver comes from the word cleaver. They think that uh, that cleaver means kitchen hatchet. When they think cleaver, they think something uh, like this with a big, thick, heavy blade that's made for whacking at things. Um, this is not made for whacking at things. This is made for um, the kind of tasks that you would normally use a regular chef's knife for, uh, cutting relatively soft product, vegetables, boneless meats, um, herbs, those kinds of things. This is a kitchen hatchet. This is made for uh, whacking through tendon and bone and two by four and maybe some light forestry work and killing zombies. That's not what this is for. This is not a whacking knife. And you can see the blade here is really thin. Uh, probably what, maybe one fourth the thickness of this guy. All right. So now that we know what we're talking about, um, we'll get on with it. So I've had this cleaver for a few months now, but thought that it was a good idea to kind of back up and um, do some first impressions of you know my thoughts when I pulled this out of the box. Uh, kind of two things struck me. One was the just size and presence of this cleaver. Uh, it was sort of a, a wow, yeah, this is in fact a, a Haas cleaver here. Um, the other was the uh, just beautiful fit and finish and material quality and attention to detail. Um, just a really, really beautifully made uh, piece of cutlery. You can see I've got it kind of scuffed and smudged up now. Um, I've been using this uh, almost daily for quite a few months now, um, and I certainly haven't been babing it, but it's, it's uh, held up very well. Uh, it's just not as immaculate as it came out of the box. <clears throat> so back to that first point um, of size. I think this is a case of um, the impression or presence of this cleaver being larger than it really is. Um, kind of see what I'm talking about. We can compare it to the knife that uh, everyone really asks me about when we're talking about this cleaver, which is the famous CCK 1303, 13303, whatever the number is. Um, you know what I'm talking about. If you know Chinese cleavers, you know what this is. Um, it's really not that much smaller than the Devon Thomas. If we go uh, line them up here, we go spine to spine, uh, heel to heel, we can see uh, a little, little bit more. There we go. So we can see that, I mean, it's bigger in every way, um, but it's not that much bigger. It's just kind of a step up. Uh, but the impression, uh, I think, is that each one of these little extra size increases adds up to a lot. It's certainly heavier. Um, the CCK is a straight blade. There's no taper here. The uh, 
Devin Thomas does have a really beautiful distal taper. Uh, it's very, very subtle. And it ends up about as thin as the CCK um, out near the tip here. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. Well, uh, if I can do this without cutting any pieces myself off, we'll kind of hold them up here. Yeah, so you can kind of see there what we're talking about. Uh, they're as close as really makes no difference uh, in terms of thickness out in this sort of last section. Aside from the extra metal we've got in the blade and the weight that that's going to cause, there's also uh, obviously some extra metal in the handle. Uh, you can see there's a, a beautiful little pin about halfway down here. So we've got a lot more steel going through the handle. The CCK um, has this sort of you know classic rat tail that goes all the way through, but it's a relatively um, uh, thin chunk of metal going through the handle. Um, Talking handles too, we've got a beautiful uh, ebony wood handle, which is very dark and dense and heavy. CCK, I mean, I don't know what this is. Uh, so it just sort of every little piece is a little bit more, a little bit thicker, a little bit heavier. And again, uh, that just adds up to when it's in your hand, something that feels like a lot more. So another sort of size comparison that we make here is with a 270 millimeter Gyoto. This is, I hope I don't butcher the name too terribly, a Kikuichi TKC Gyoto. Um, you can see if we go tip to tip here, uh, we got a little extra length here, but they're about as near as makes no difference in overall length. Um, the 270 Gyoto is about as large as most people are going to use in the kitchen. I mean, certainly there's uh, people making 300s and 330s and crazy things like that, but in terms of uh, most normal humans uh, who aren't Japanese comic book characters, this is the biggest multi-purpose knife that they're going to use in the kitchen. Uh, and you can see that, again, overall length, we're about the same. Certainly you've got a little more blade length here uh, on the Gyoto, but uh, you've certainly got... Um, more height and more uh, mass on the uh, cleaver. Uh, you can see, interesting enough, uh, thickness. The uh, TKC, which is a thin knife, actually starts off a little bit thicker than the DT, uh, but because of blade height, we actually end up with a much more rigid blade on the cleaver. So we'll talk a little more about fit and finish and ergonomics. Um, the build quality, as I mentioned before, is really outstanding. Um, we've got Really great steel, really nice wood and handle material, uh, and it's all just put together and finished off uh, with a lot of uh, care. You can see that the big stuff, like the uh, fit of handle to blade, is just perfect. There's no gap there. The handle is actually just a tad bigger uh, than the blade here. There's a tiny little step up. Um, you can see that the chamfer on the edge of the handle that little millimeter or so bevel is about the same distance um, as the handle is bigger than the neck. So you've got a nice little rounded, almost a little uh, detent there, um, so that it gives a, a, a it's almost like a, a stop there for your finger. So when you've got a finger riding in there, you've got just kind of like a little tiny soft um, edge there that helps um, kind of lock your finger into that. Um, little elbow there. Flares out uh, a little bit as we go out towards the heel, but it's all just really uh, nicely put together. You can see the um, shape, the geometry on the octagonal handle is perfectly even. It's about as nice as I've seen. Um, the transitions on the handle, the seam between the uh, ferrule and the rest of the handle is, is just about perfect. No noticeable change there. Uh, every edge has been um, rounded and polished, no grind marks anywhere, perfectly smooth and satiny and nice to touch just everywhere. Um, what this translates to though is a really comfortable knife because there's nowhere save the blade edge uh, that's not nice to touch and hold on to. So you've really got a lot of grip options when working with this. I think it's probably my most comfortable uh, big project, long haul, going to be using it for hours in a row or uh, all day knife. Um, I've made you know 10 pounds of salsa and not had calluses or sore spots afterwards which is um, uh, a big deal. So talk some more um, about the Devon Thomas in relation or in comparison to the CCK. Um, it's not really fair to compare um, 
fit and finish and build quality because uh, you're talking order of magnitudes uh, difference in price here. But in terms of design, you can see there's some similarities. One of the things that I thought was interesting is some people really didn't like, this is a, I guess it's important to mention, uh, a Gen 1 or part of the first batch of Devon Thomas Cleavers. Uh, this has a neck here. Uh, subsequent um, batches, uh, I believe, they eliminated this neck. They moved the handle up so the handle is just butted right up against uh, or in line with the edge of the blade. Uh, one of the things that I thought was interesting is that the, the CCK sort of has a neck too. I mean, we've got this goofy kind of crimped ferrule slash neck thing here, uh, but if you line it up, it's interestingly about the same. If you look and see where the handle ends here and where the blade begins, this little section in between there, we'll call it, I've got really wide thumbs, but uh, it's maybe a, a general finger width to thumb width kind of distance, distance in there. Um, so interesting.